Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is an urgent question. Uh, I call Polly McNeill. Deciding officer, to ask the Scottish Government what action it took when Glasgow City Council informed it that 57 privately owned buildings have combustible cladding in their construction. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to Ms McNeill for that question. President Officer, all 32 local authorities were asked on the 20th of June 2017 to provide information on the use of ACM cladding on private high-rise uh, domestic buildings. By the 9th of August, uh, 30 out of the 32 local authorities reported that no ACM had been identified on private high-rise domestic buildings in their areas. Edinburgh and Glasgow councils, due to their size, needed more time to complete this intensive work. Scottish Government offered support to assist in this exercise and Edinburgh Council uh, accepted that offer. At a meeting of the Ministerial Working Group on the 8th of September, the group was updated that Edinburgh Council reported that no private high-rise domestic buildings had been identified with ACM Cladden. We also heard at that meeting that Glasgow City Council notified Scottish Government standards officials late on the 5th of September that 56 privately owned buildings may have some form of ACM cladding. The Ministerial Working Group were not assured of the quality of information provided uh, in the return from Glasgow Council uh, and agreed to seek further clarification and specifics on this matter. This is especially important as dependent on the type of ACM cladding, the extent of its use and how it has been installed as part of a cladding system, there may be no cause for concern. The Scottish Government therefore wrote to Glasgow Council on Tuesday the 4th of September to establish further details of the extent and type of ACM that may be present and offered support and assistance in gathering that work. We clarified that request yesterday and again offered support uh, to obtain the information. As the member uh, will know, that offer has now been accepted and we will now work with Glasgow Council to fully investigate and scrutinise the information they have collected so that they can provide reassurance to the occupants of private high-rise buildings that their buildings are safe and any further actions identified uh, will be taken forward. The Council are aiming to provide that information uh, by the end of next week. Polly McNeill. Uh, firstly, thank you to the presiding officer for selecting this emergency question. People across the United Kingdom, including in Scotland, watched the horror of the Grain fell unfold. The tower's combustible cladding was a major factor in blaze spreading. So now it's come to light that 57 private buildings in Glasgow containing numerous households have been constructed using the same combustible cladding. Shockingly, this was known by Glasgow City Council officials who told ministers, but residents were not informed. If it were not for this parliament's local government committee scrutiny, we would be none the wiser and credit is due to them for that. I asked the Cabinet Secretary today why her Housing Minister did not tell Glasgow City Council to inform residents immediately of this information in the interest of transparency. Does the Minister agree that failure to notify and reassure residents before this was made public, which it now is, and reassure their safety was a monumental error and illustrates an unacceptable level of complacency? Has the Minister now fully briefed the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, who were also kept in the dark? And given that Ministers knew on the 8th of September, can she demonstrate to Parliament that they have acted on this important matter with a sense of urgency? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, I'm grateful to Ms McNeill uh, for her scrutiny and for the information that she uh, has indeed uh, requested. I think given that this government moved quickly to establish a ministerial uh, working group uh, to ensure that we could provide uh, as much reassurance to the public as possible about the safety uh, of buildings in Scotland following the tragic uh, events at Grenfell you know, speaks uh, volumes. In terms of the, the, the detailed questions um, about what we knew when, it's important uh, to clarify that although uh, Ms McNeill in her question to me uh, has assumed uh, 
households. The information that the Ministerial Working Group was given, it spoke of properties. And some of the gaps and incompleteness in information was indeed uh, around that very factor. It's all very well to talk about 56 properties, but a crucial question is indeed how many of those properties uh, are domestic. It's also important to uh, recognise that the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service um, sit on the Ministerial Working Group uh, and were, uh, like the, the Scottish Government, uh, like Ministers, uh, aware of the information uh, and the incompleteness uh, of information that Glasgow uh, had uh, supplied. Uh, let me give her the assurance that I expect my officials to work very closely. I know they do work very closely uh, with all local government officials, uh, including Glasgow. And uh, just to, to be clear, that in terms of the uh, follow-up uh, information that we requested on the 14th uh, of September, uh, before and after that, the Housing Minister uh, is very actively engaged uh, with officials in terms of seeking uh, and pressing for uh, relevant uh, information. But it is important uh, to recognise the responsibilities uh, of Glasgow uh, City Council. Uh, Glasgow City Council, uh, in a letter from Susan Aitken uh, today, uh, has made clear that the information presented uh, to the government uh, was not a complete picture uh, and therefore uh, that's the reason uh, that Glasgow City Council did not make that information uh, public. Uh, I'm pleased to say that Glasgow City Council have now accepted the offer of the Scottish Government to help them in what is indeed uh, a detailed uh, and onerous task. Uh, they are seeking to provide the clarity that we require by the end of next week. And I'm also pleased that the leader of Glasgow City Council has said that she has instructed her officers to liaise immediately uh, with the Scottish uh, Fire uh, and Rescue Service. And I hope that I've covered all of McNeil's uh, questions. If there's anything I have admitted, uh, I will, of course, duly follow up with. Polly McNeill. I asked the Cabinet Secretary, given that she's told Parliament uh, now that the information provided by Glasgow City Council was incomplete. And surely Glasgow City Council could not be under any illusion about the urgency of this. So what was done by ministers from that point when that in it was clear that information should have been available to Scottish ministers? How can she possibly have faith in Glasgow City Council to take this forward? But of course, I'm sure she'll agree with this that public reassurance is paramount going forward. Can the Cabinet Secretary demonstrate today that the government are in command of the situation and that they will do everything to restore faith to those residents? Can the Cabinet Secretary say clearly that residents have now been contacted because I believe there are some residents affected by this? And can you now guarantee that those buildings are safe? And if not, why not? And when will you be meeting with the Fire and Rescue Service to ensure that all of these buildings are checked as soon as possible? Cabinet Secretary. So let me, uh, in the spirit of Ms McNeill's question, say that um, we don't for one minute abdicate our responsibilities as a government. Uh, we recognise that if we ask for information, we've got a duty to scrutinise that information so that we have confidence in that information so that that information can be used appropriately either to identify action uh, or indeed to reassure uh, residents or tenants. I am clear that information is power, that any knowledge we have as a government places a responsibility on us. But that does not for one minute abdicate any local authority, including Glasgow, from their responsibilities. And what the leader of Glasgow City Council has said today is that once they have provided the information that this government really requires uh, in terms of that public uh, reassurance. And it is important uh, to recognise that the gaps in the information so far do not enable um, a complete picture to be presented uh, to either the owners of those buildings who will have responsibilities or indeed uh, the residents uh, that um, reside uh, in those buildings. And it's important uh, to recognise that we take our responsibilities seriously. And when the Chief Building Standards Officer 
said that he was not satisfied with the overall detail uh, of information from Glasgow uh, City Council. Uh, we followed up on that um, after our discussion at the Ministerial Working Group uh, in correspondence uh, to Glasgow City Council uh, on the 14th. And as I said, the Housing Minister uh, meets regularly with officials because officials need to be working with officials uh, in local government. And if I can give a very brief example uh, of some of the gaps in the information that was presented to us, because until those gaps in information are filled, we will not have the best information to rightly uh, inform uh, those residents. And some of the gaps in those information, uh, as I'd indicated earlier, we were not clear about the number of households. Information about some of the buildings was not clear whether it was aluminium composite material or not. It was not clear about where it was. It was not clear uh, whether it was used extensively. And it was not clear whether plans had been retrieved uh, to, to find that. And all of this information is important to be able to reassure the public. And I am clear that as a government we have responsibilities. But Glasgow City Council have responsibilities too. And in terms of building standards, they have a lead responsibility uh, as per legislation and the enforcement uh, duties uh, they, they have. And I am pleased at the correspondence that the leader uh, of Glasgow City Council has sent uh, to uh, the local government committee outlining the action that they will now take to work with the government uh, and to inform residents as soon as the information is available. We have to be given accurate information to residents that is based on uh, an accurate assessment of the situation. Thank you. The number of members want to ask supplementary, so we'll try and give them some extent. We'll try and get through them. Uh, Bob Doris first. Cabinet Secretary, everyone residing in impacted properties have a right to know as soon as possible tenants, not just owners. I would hope the Cabinet Secretary agrees with that fact and that there should be an absolute duty on local authorities to inform both residents and the fire service, but does the Cabinet Secretary also agree the fragmented nature of records across local government, particularly in Glasgow, is, uh, is as unacceptable as is antiquated? And will she agree there's an overwhelming and essential need for a reliable and robust national database so that if ever there is a future need to interrogate high rise safety ever again, we never find ourselves in this sorry mess? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, let me be clear to uh, uh, Mr Doris and to uh, Ms McNeill that um, residents do indeed have, have the right to know, uh, but they have the right to know accurate uh, information, uh, information that accurately portrays if there's a problem uh, and if there's a problem, how it's going to be redressed. Um, and uh, that information needs to be made available uh, to residents uh, and building owners as soon uh, as possible and as soon as it's practically uh, possible. And the Council have given commitments uh, around that. I think the point Mr Doris raised about fragmented nature um, of, of records. I think it's a very interesting one. Um, we recognise that for the, the cities, Glasgow and, and Edinburgh, in terms of uh, having to work through records to establish um, and to answer uh, questions uh, whether there's aluminium composite material uh, in domestic uh, private high-rises has indeed uh, been an, an onerous task. Hence, as a government, we've been offering proactively uh, to help with that. And I think the issue about a national database is certainly an interesting one uh, and one that the Ministerial Working Group uh, will look at further. Graeme Simpson. <coughs> um, the, the Local Government uh, Committee yesterday heard with uh, disbelief um, that this news uh, that 57 properties in Glasgow um, have ACM cladding. Um, we also heard with disbelief that residents in Glasgow of the, in those properties affected have not been told. Now, for once, I'm not laying the blame at Kevin Stewart's door. I think this is the responsibility of Glasgow City Council. They have a responsibility to the citizens of Glasgow if they have information, they should be sharing that straight away. Um, repeated offers of help in emails from the ministerial working group to the council refused, refused. Now, would the, would the cabinet secretary agree with me that, that is frankly unacceptable and that Glasgow City Council should immediately be, in, be informing the residents uh, in those blocks affected immediately and immediately 
contacting the Fire and Rescue Service. Cabinet Secretary. I thank Mr Simpson for, for his question. I think what he reflects is that uh, the Ministerial Working Group was certainly left with more questions than answers in a similar uh, fashion to what the Local Government uh, Committee experienced uh, yesterday. Um, can I point him uh, to the fact that uh, while there are aspects uh, of this experience that are indeed less than desirable, uh, this Government recognised uh, the onerous tasks that we were placing upon local government following the very tragic events at Grenfell, that we were rightly uh, asking for assurances and detailed information. And we recognised that that was an onerous task and we were proactively uh, offering to help. Uh, and it took on the, the third offer before uh, the City Council has um, accepted that health. Um, but I am pleased uh, that it was, uh, I suppose, the political intervention from the Leader of the Council uh, that has said that yes, uh, they will accept the help from uh, the Scottish Government to assist them in their uh, responsibilities. And she has also, in her letter today to uh, Bob Doris, convener of the Local Government Committee, uh, said that she has instructed her officers uh, to engage uh, immediately with the local Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. And I think, um, you know, there will indeed uh, be valuable uh, uh, lessons in all of this. And the, what I have to repeat, presiding officer, is yes, residents do indeed have the right to know, but we have to have the right information to give to residents, or we may be given false information or indeed cause an undue uh, alarm where it's not, not required. But we must have clarity for residents as soon as possible. There are four more questions, Minister. End of time. Uh, Patrick Harvey. Thank you very much. I very much agree with the sense of urgency conveyed in, in Pauline McNeill's question. I would like to know what process is going to be used to ensure that all residents, including private rented sector tenants, uh, are given the information they need at a time when there's been very high turnover, for example, of new student tenancies uh, in Glasgow. And can the Minister clarify, would a private landlord be acting within the law or not by letting out a property that was in a building that proved to be unsafe on the basis of its cladding? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Mr Harvey certainly uh, points to the fact that uh, private landlords and uh, property owners do indeed have uh, responsibilities under building safety and uh, fire uh, regulations. I think the point he makes about uh, being reassured that uh, residents do indeed receive the information that they are entitled to receive and the fashion in which that information is shared once it is available. Uh, that will be something uh, that myself or Mr Stewart will discuss directly uh, with Glasgow City Council. I think perhaps we may even need to rely on a door-to-door -door exercise um, as opposed to some um, you know, desktop exercise or uh, you know by, by, by correspondence but we will uh, take that very much on board because when this information becomes available uh, we want to reassure tenants or advise of what action if any is required and we want to ensure that every resident uh, who's entitled to that information receives it. I grumbled. <clears throat> the cabinet secretary will know <clears throat> given the access issues that the burden of carrying out remedial work on high-rise properties can be significant. Should significant uh, work be required, what assistance will the Scottish Government and Glasgow City Council be able to provide to residents in terms of finance and the coordination of the necessary remedial work? Cabinet Secretary. Again, President Officer, I think that's a fair point. I think it's an important point. Um, but first things first, uh, we need to find out the facts. We need to find out what the issues are, uh, if any. Uh, and then we need to establish what action has to be taken. And then we'll need to establish uh, how and who uh, pays, uh, pays for that. Uh, that's an issue that I'm very uh, alive to. Joanne Lamond. Thank you very much, President Officer. Can I just clarify um, the process here? I think the Cabinet Secretary said you became aware of inadequate information on the 5th, but you didn't write to the Council till the 14th. Given the urgency of the matter, it might not have been more appropriate to pick up the phone. And can you explain, or are you suggesting, that the Council leader did not know until yesterday, when the Local Government Committee addressed this question, that there was a problem, given that she's now reassuring um, that she will take action? And further, I wonder if the Cabinet Secretary is aware the Glasgow City Council is only now reconstituting its scrutiny committees. And would the Cabinet Secretary agree that in the interest of transparency, 
and giving, giving confidence to people of Glasgow in these matters, this delay was unacceptable. And would she urge Glasgow City Council's leadership to cooperate with a more open and transparent approach to Council's business so that this issue, which appears to come as a surprise to the Council leader yesterday, would not happen again, given the gravity of the safety issues con concerned? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, um, scrutiny and transparency are always a good thing. Uh, this government has led by example in terms of our workings around uh, the ministerial working group uh, on fire safety and uh, building standards. Uh, I'm sure uh, all of our colleagues in Glasgow City Council will have heard uh, the remarks made by Ms uh, Lamont uh, and uh, others, but these uh, are uh, mainly uh, issues for Glasgow City Council. In terms of this government's response, uh, as I did confirm, we received information um, from Glasgow City Council late on the 5th. Uh, we discussed that information in great detail at the Ministerial Working Group on the 8th, uh, which met on the uh, Friday afternoon, uh, and correspondence uh, was sent to Glasgow City Council uh, on uh, the 14th. She will appreciate that there is an importance uh, of putting some of these matters uh, for clarity uh, in writing, uh, so that there is indeed uh, a record. But let me reassure her that my officials and indeed, indeed the uh, Chief Building Standards Officer um, are never ever afraid or shy of picking up the phone uh, to any uh, local authority officer, including in Glasgow. Very briefly, James Kelly. The handling of this issue by both the Scottish Government and Glasgow City Council has been far from satisfactory and leaves both parties standing accused of a cover-up. In the interest of transparency, uh, will the Cabinet Secretary commit to publishing full details of all discussions uh, at all government forums and between all government officials in relation to this matter? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, I, I, mean, I reject that analysis uh, from uh, Mr Kelly. In terms of the workings in and around the Ministerial Working Group, there's a web page. Uh, we publish uh, minutes. Um, indeed, yesterday, um, Mr Stewart wrote to uh, the Local Government uh, Committee uh, and included you know, correspondence uh, that we had sent to uh, Glasgow uh, City, City Council. Um, so I reject uh, his, his claims. Uh, and of course, you know, members are free to ask questions uh, and make requests of the government. And, you know, we are you know, willing to be uh, open in this, but I stress we've got to get the right uh, information uh, to residents as soon as possible. And we have a responsibility to get the right and accurate information. And we do publish information, Mr Kelly. You should have a wee look at it. I urge you to do so. Can I thank members and uh, ministers for their time? Uh, I'm conscious that uh, there's a lot of interest in this um, subject, not least from uh, Mr Doris, the convener of the Local Government Committee. But the matter will come before the Local Government Committee, I believe. And I would urge members perhaps to uh, take their interest there. Uh, we've given it some time this afternoon.